Good morning, good morning, Ashford. Welcome to Sunday Shout Out. This is our opportunity to have a little meet and greet before the service. And you may have noticed uh, that uh, Karen Sevier is uh, with us uh, this uh, morning. I thought we would do something a little bit different. First of all, good morning, Karen. Good morning. How are you, Pastor Herb? I, I'm doing well. I, I thought we would do something a little different today. We would we would mix it up for a good reason. You know, we had yeah. quite an event-filled uh, week last week. Yes, uh, with um, the uh, winter storm and the power outages, and I just thought we would extend our Sunday shout out. Normally, we do five minutes before the start of the service, right. but I really want to take this opportunity uh, to 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 hear from our our members and friends. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, make sure we just check in on everybody, make sure everybody is is doing OK. Uh, just, uh, you know, if they've got uh, some information they want to share uh, and just talk about how their week went. And hopefully uh, they've got power and, and water restored. I know uh, you were you were out a couple of days. Isn't that correct? Oh, goodness gracious. Yes, I was out and, you know, it, they kept playing tricks with us. Uh, it would come on and we say, yeah. And then all of a sudden, a couple of hours later, we're out again. So that was really it interesting. And just I felt so I felt so disconnected. You know, I couldn't access the Internet. I couldn't you know, nothing. And so it was so odd. And for a moment, for a period of time, I couldn't even connect with my mom. Yeah, it, it was it was a helpless uh, time there for a moment. We didn't experience the, the, the rolling blackout. We, we didn't lose power until Tuesday night, I think. Uh, and then we only lost it for about uh, 22 hours. But but just mm -hmm. just a great story. Uh, our uh, one of our next door neighbors, when when the power went out, uh, hooked up his generator. We ran a line over. He oh, allowed wow. us to run a line over to our house, at least keep our refrigerator uh, plugged up yeah. so we didn't lose uh, any food. So all all in all, uh, you know, we got through it. I know others had it really, really rough. It's just a rough time for people. And you've seen the photos of people, uh, pipes bursting. And so I uh, yes. just want to find out, uh, you know, make sure that all, all of our members are are uh, doing well. So let's just kind of begin uh, with uh, with with uh, Bob, Bob, uh, Bob and Nancy Moore. Good morning, uh, Bob. I hope you and uh, Nancy and, and, and Janet are uh, doing well. Don't know what type of issues you you had, but we certainly hope that you're doing well. Uh, yes, this is my wife, morning. Lorraine, uh, wishing us a happy Hi, first Lorraine. Sunday of Lent. It is the first Sunday of uh, <laughs> Lent, and so I'm I'm excited as we are uh, marching toward Resurrection Sunday. Uh, yes. Uh, Ed, we now apparently is experiencing some technical difficulties waiting to access video. I don't know what that means, uh, but uh, Ed, we uh, hope hopefully you will you you will get it going here uh, pretty soon. This is our friend uh, Kenneth Turk. I don't know if you remember Kenneth or not from uh, Windsor, but uh, uh, Kenneth has been joining us on a regular Indeed. basis. He's saying good good morning. Ken, I hope you and your family are well. I hope you didn't have uh, too many issues, although everybody. Uh, had some sort of an issue for sure. Uh, Ernie Brandle, good morning to to you. Good morning. Uh, yeah, we're so glad to, as always, to to hear from you. Uh, Kelly, uh, God bless you. Hope you are uh, doing well. I think I think it was Kelly. Was it Kelly? Maybe it was Sarah that that had posted a a, a video of of their husband holding a, a bucket of water, talking about he's going to go go to the well and fetch some water. It was a go to the well, <laughs> fetch some water a type of scenario this past week for sure, wasn't it? Hey, Rita Lucas, good morning to you. I hope uh, you and uh, your family are well. It is always great to hear from Leonard and Judy Kuriger. Uh, yes, thank God for warmer weather. Uh, and that is for sure. Now, Karen, you said that what we've got another cold spell coming. Say, say it ain't uh, so. so. So I've heard, but not like the old one, not, not like the one from this past week. Uh, well, thank you. It thank, won't be as cold, thank God. <laughs> thank God for that. Hey, Sarah, good morning. I hope you <laughs> hey, Sarah. Uh, and, and, and your family are well. Uh, Carol, <laughs> it is always great to hear from you. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. I, I, I have a sneaking suspicion I'm going to hear from uh, your daughter. I think it, it, either in Atlanta or on, on, on the East Coast, but I, I'm, I'm scrolling through the, the uh, check-ins right now. I'm sure she's, she's going to be uh, checking in pretty soon. Hey, Jesslyn, good morning to you. There's Jesslyn, Karen. You know Jesslyn, don't you? Hey! 
Good morning, Jessalyn. Wow. wow. <laughs> and and uh, listen, all the way from Tuskegee, Alabama, this is my wife's auntie, I believe, Myra Temple. Uh, she's oh, watching hi. from Tuskegee, Alabama. And so good morning to you. I hope everybody is doing well over there. I know Kentucky got some snow. I don't know about Alabama. Uh, but, you know, it seems like everybody's getting some cold weather. Uh, and in fact, that yes. system that moved from uh, us, I think, sort of sort of moved up that way. Yes. Good morning, Jackson Henson. How are hey, you? Hey, Mr. Jack. Yeah, I hope uh, everybody is 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 doing well. This this is Ken coming back to say hello. Hello to you, Karen. So blessing, blessing. Hey, Kenneth Turk. Top of the morning to yes. you. <laughs> Hey, hey, listen, uh, uh, Sarah. Uh, okay, Sarah. Good, good morning. I think we already said good morning to you. I clicked the wrong button. Sorry about that. I was really trying to get back to Leonard. <laughs> Leonard says they were seventy straight hours. They were out for seventy oh my gosh. hours. <gasps> Uh, said they didn't lose water, heated hot dogs in the fireplace. Well, all right. oh, that sounds <laughs> all right. <laughs> Well, uh, my, my question is, at, 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 at what point did you get tired of hot dogs? <laughs> my goodness. Wow, 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 wow. wow. Ed Winnow, he says, uh, be, be blessed, safe, and warm. Uh, he ex expected Bob, um, uh, that's Bullet Bob Collins, a home. You know, Bob has been uh, ill and uh, uh, hunkered down in uh, Colorado with his sister and, and, and brother-in-law. I think he, he is on the mend and uh, headed back to Houston. Hey, yeah. Andy Adams, good morning to you. Hope all is, is well. Uh, B. Garza, you and Victor and the family doing well, I assume. Mr. God bless Andy, you. Ms. Ms. Garza, yeah. Yeah. Ms. B. Garza. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Stu Quarter says says hello. Uh, by Good the way, those of you who who are just tuning in, we're doing an extended version uh, of our Sunday shout out, uh, just due to all of the mess we had. Yes, in, in Houston uh, last week, and just wanted to take a little extra time uh, to say hello to see how uh, everybody is 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 doing. Uh, this is my mother in law. Also, we have at least two people watching from Tuskegee, Alabama. Uh, and so she she is saying hello to us. Good morning to you, Jenny Smith. Hello, hey, Jeff Jenny. Miller. Uh, hey, Jeff Miller. All yeah, right. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff says we survived. And survived. Say, well, you, know <laughs> you know, and 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 you know, we're kind of laughing about it, Karen, right now. But it, it was there was nothing funny. It was about tough. It at all. Oh my gosh. Uh, and, and some people are still still suffering. Uh, yes. As, as yes. A result of of what went down. Dolores Wilhelm. Good morning to you. Uh, I hope all all is well. Uh, you know, earlier I was I was talking about uh, somebody posting a picture of their husband going to the well. Turns out it was Sarah, Sarah's husband. He says yes, my oh, husband wow. was fetching. <laughs> he was fetching the water. My goodness, yeah, that's 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 the way it was. Hey, uh, Helen Holder, good morning to you. We're so glad, uh, as always, to to hear from from you. Hope I, I hope all is well. Indeed. Uh, uh, this is my sister Paula. She's 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 in um, uh, Bonaire, Georgia. Bonaire, Georgia. All I think right. That's near near Macon, Georgia. Good so she said good morning. Uh, and uh, listen, and and then she said good good morning to 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 me and to the uh, church family. So Paula, Rebecca, that's what the R stands for. Uh, oh good, wow! Good, good, good morning to you. Uh, <laughs> listen, she put it out there. I didn't. Uh, so it's Paula Rebecca. That's that is it. <laughs> hey, uh, Alice uh, Haston James. Good morning to you and hey, to Ms. your Alice. family. Your family has expanded. God bless you. Uh, thank good you morning. so much for for a checking in. Uh, uh, Rita is giving us the forecast. I, I don't think she's in Ohio, but apparently she knows someone who is, and they got some snow. So we can forecast snow in Ohio. Uh, good morning, Linda Carter. We're so glad to hear from you as always. Uh, Sydney Friedenball checking in. Good morning. Hope you and Mike and the cats are doing well. Uh, Glenda, Glenda Johnson uh, always checks in from Missouri. I don't need to ask her if it's cold right about now. We know it is. I think. Indeed. Uh, yeah, it, it, is, it is cold in, in, in Missouri, but it's always glad to hear from you. Uh, Glenda. And looky here, if, if it's not Ina Kirk. Well, hi. All the way from uh, from Houston, Texas, uh, che <laughs> checking in to say hello to Pastor Irv and daughter. Oh, good morning, mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, uh, uh, I, w- I was asking, was B and, and Victor okay? She says, yes, we are. They they are doing yeah. fine. Hey, Gia, good morning to you. Hey. Uh, yes, right. yes, we, that is our hope that everyone stayed warm as, as, yes. as warm as, as possible. As I, I would say this, I stayed in the bed much longer than I normally would have, but, <laughs> but, but the warm covers were good. They, yes. they, they were really good. Good morning, Dean Coffer. I hope you're well. God Dean. bless you. Uh, this is Elaine Adams. Uh, and these beautiful bride. I think they've been married 50 years now. I <gasps> wow. Uh, so blessings. That's yes, it is. Awesome. A, a, a beautiful day. Uh, Sydney's uh, saying that they're doing great and the cats are too. I know that, uh, uh, y- y- yeah, it was a little rough going there for a while. Sydney was uh, sharing with me, but, uh, you know, they, they have made it through. And yeah. from right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> It's Ron Sevier saying, saying good, good morning. Good morning, husband. <laughs> so good, <laughs> good, 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 good. So uh, listen, Karen, uh, th- those, those are the folk who have checked in so, so far. Uh, again, yeah. good morning to everybody. We're praying that everybody is safe and, and all, all, all is well. So let's officially uh, begin this worship service uh, this, this morning uh, with, with, with you sharing, sharing, sharing a song. Amen. 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 Indeed. It is a great day. It's been a tough week, but it's a great day to just give the Lord thanks for his grace. Lord, how you love me. I don't deserve grace on top of grace. More than I've asked for, more than I'm worth. Grace on top of grace. How sweet. Let the 
Yes, he is. He is king over all the earth. He, he is great in power. Uh, and even in, in spite of everything that 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 happened, uh, you know, last week, uh, God uh, was still with us. Uh, God was still watching over us. And I, I, I am so happy about that. I also want to mention that uh, if if any of you uh, have um, uh, any issues uh, or, or, or any challenges, uh, and, and, and you think that uh, the church might be able to help, please uh, give us an opportunity to try to help. Uh, and so there's the contact information. Uh, if you would just, you know, send, send the church an email, phone call, uh, you know, let us, let us at least try to help you in, you know, what, whatever ways that, that we can. Amen. So uh, we, we want to take uh, some time and uh, pray right now. Um, and, um, you know, something that, that we've been doing, Karen, as you know, for the last several weeks is that we have been uh, pray, praying uh, together. And, and while we can't hear each other, uh, we, we are praying in unison on one accord. And so I just ask you right now if, if we would all come together and join in our prayer of the people. Let's pray. Almighty God, you said you would be our refuge and strength in times of trouble. You said we should not fear even when the earth is shaking all around us. You said you would be our light and our salvation. Thank you for honoring your word. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves before you and seek your face and your power through prayer. Hear our prayer for all those who suffered and who are still suffering as a result of last week's devastating winter storm. Thank you for the first responders, utility workers, and good neighbors who offered relief and resources. Comfort those whose family members died last week. Give peace to those who have been emotionally scarred by having to go days without power and water. Provide resources for those who are facing costly repairs and don't have adequate insurance. Open the windows of heaven and pour out your grace, mercy, and favor. Reveal every crooked contractor and rip-off artist who would try to take advantage of our family, friends, and neighbors during this stressful time. Cancel crooked schemes. Confuse evil plans. Let no weapons formed against us prosper. Father, we pray that our electrical and water problems are resolved and that every human action that can be taken to prevent future system failures is being taken. And when human hands fail, let your hands, O oh God, prevail. Forgive us for taking so many things for granted. Thank you for the heat we have in our homes. Thank you for the clean water we have to drink. Hear our prayer for those who have no home. Help us to see the face of Jesus in the eyes of every homeless person we meet and to treat them as our neighbor. 
Empower us to do all we can to bring justice and peace to their lives. Lord, as we move through the rest of this year, overwhelm us with your love, mercy, and grace. Lord, give us more than we can imagine. Take us farther than we can reach. Show us more than we can see. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we ask you to hear our prayer. Amen. 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 So, Karen, amen. I, I want to get to uh, a couple of uh, announcements uh, All right. as we uh, can continue. I always want to uh, encourage everyone to join our prayer conference call uh, Tuesdays uh, and Saturdays, 6 p.m., on Tuesdays and Saturdays at 12 at noon. Uh, just look look forward to hearing more of you uh, joining together as we uh, pray for the health and the spiritual well-being of not only our members, but for this church family as well. Don't forget about our Power Wednesday conference called Bible Study. That's uh, on uh, Wednesdays at 9.30 a.m. You can join the call. Diana Fair uh, continues to do an outstanding job there. I sure do appreciate her leadership. I also appreciate the leadership of Ron Sevier. Uh, he is uh, leading our men of honor and action a Bible study. We could use uh, more men to uh, join in. It's a great, wholesome, and empowering uh, Bible study and I, I would hope that you would participate. Uh, later today, uh, we are um, continuing our Lent study uh, series uh, during uh, Lent. It's called Listen to Me. J.D. Walt uh, is uh, providing the resource. David Booth provides the leadership for our virtual Sunday school, and you can get connected. It's pretty easy. If you just go to our website and click this image that you're looking at right now, it'll uh, take you right to the instructions you need to log in to Zoom and be a part of this outstanding uh, Sunday School lesson. And of course, don't forget that uh, on Sunday, March the 7th, we're back in the parking lot for our next drive-in communion and worship service. We are looking so forward to, uh, to seeing you uh, there. And so Karen, I gotta tell you, so listen, on, 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 on Friday night. Yeah. So I'm, I'm um, I'm watching an awards ceremony. I'm just, you know, minding my own business, watching this <laughs> award ceremony. And then suddenly, this happens. This is Lady Di. And I'm here to announce the 2021 TGMEA Texas Finalists, Inspirational Artist of the Year. And the winner is Karen Zella Xavier, Houston. To God be the glory. I love the Lord with all of my heart. I am because He is. I feel so encouraged and so loved and supported by all those who voted for me. We did it. Thank you so very much. Thank you, TGMEA, Pastor Larry Davis, Mitchell Wallace, who all worked tirelessly to support the independent artists. My producers, Glenn GP Piper, Sheila Moore Piper. Thank you, BDMU Groove. And thank you, Ronald Lee, for being such a wonderful and loving husband. I love you. Thank you, Ina Kirksey Zellis. You're the most amazing mom. Thank you so very much. There she is, the award-winning Karen Sellers Sevier. Congratulations! Oh, wow! wow. <laughs> Thank you. And now I, 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 I knew that you had been nominated, uh, mm -hmm. and, and of course I knew the the, the award service uh, ceremony was was coming up on Friday. But listen, uh, I, I had no doubt that that you were going to win. So we we are just so uh, proud of you and uh I, you. I know i know you you put a lot of work into into this didn't you it's i tell you what it has been a year trying to thank you vanessa trying to do all of this amid the pandemic so uh and just uh thank you kelly trying to just stay encouraged i tell you i thank god i'm surrounded by just a wonderful village of people who, uh, thank you, Jacques, who really keep me encouraged, my husband, my mom, just their support, um, and just uh, friends and family who just keep me encouraged. I mean, really, since I first started, thank you, Mr. Jack, since I first started out in 2017 with releasing my first single, <laughs> Nadia, 
<laughs> Thank you. Um, from that moment, just having the courage, you know, when you're surrounded by people who can do what you do just as good, just as great, you know, it really can be a little bit intimidating, but thank God just for support and just getting out there and doing what I know the Lord has. Thank you, Sydney and Joanne, what the Lord has, uh, it gifted me and to do, and just being able to touch hearts, touch lives. And I just thank God for that opportunity. But I tell you without, um, thank you so much, everyone, without the support of my mom, my, my husband, um, my dad, and just people who have always encouraged me. Thank you, Jessalyn, and you, Pastor Irvin. I mean, just so many people, even at Ashford, I get to see, <laughs> you know, every Sunday and, and uh, the Ashford family just listens and just so, so sweet and so encouraging. It has, thank you so much. It has been a blessing uh, just being surrounded by so many uh, supportive and encouraging people. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, yes, uh, you know, we, we, we are blessed and we're all in this together. And, uh, you know, I just thank God for your for your poise, your passion, uh, your your professionalism. Uh, you know, what you bring uh, to uh, the uh, table here at Ashford, I think, is just thank you. It, it's awesome. Uh, and it's just it's just been an honor it is an honor to continue to be in ministry with you. So, again, congratulations. So Thank you. Uh, it has been a blessing. So so listen, uh, since uh, since since you're the award winning artist now, uh, oh. would you would you would you would you bless us in 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 song? Indeed. <laughs> trust the Lord. When I fear my faith will fail, He Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter would prevail, He will hold me fast. I could never keep my hold through life's fearful past. For He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast. For my Savior loves me so. He will hold me fast. His delight, Christ will hold me fast. Precious in His holy sight, He will hold us fast. He will not let my soul be lost. His promises shall last. Bought by Him at such a cost, He will hold me fast.
Jesus Christ, precious in His holy sight, He will hold us fast. He won't let our souls be lost. His promises shall last. We've been bought by Him at such a cost. Thank you, Karen. Well, it's time for today's message. I do want to share a brief word with you today as we enter this first Sunday of Lent. So this winter storm that we just suffered through did a pretty good job of interrupting our business as usual. And I thought we had enough of that last year, but oh well. So with no power, uh, no water, no heat, nothing was usual to say the least this past week. Most of the time, we, we don't see ourselves benefiting from an interruption. We usually think of an interruption as a problem. Well, this season of Lent is an interruption designed to reset the things that are out of order in our lives. At least once a year, we need to be reminded of the words in Genesis 3.19 that uh, tell us that we came from dust and to dust we will return. At least once a year, we need to be re-challenged to repent and believe the gospel. At least once a year, we need to sharpen our focus on Jesus Christ. So last Sunday, remember, we we talked about how transformation is an inside-out process. Change comes from within. When Christ is in us, the works of Christ come out of us. Becoming everything God says that we are begins on the inside. And not only is this season of Lent an opportunity for believers to experience the grace of God in new ways on the inside, it's an opportunity for persons who have yet to know Jesus Christ, for them to experience his grace and to taste and see that it is good. Ashford, do you need a reset? I can answer that for you if you'd like. Yes, you do. Yes, we do. Resets are good. And best of all, God has made us a promise that resets will not destroy us. Resets will renew us. And so we begin our Lenten sermon series with the promise and the challenge today. Since God made the promise, let's claim the promise. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to serve. I thank you for the opportunity to come before your people to proclaim your word. Now, Lord, please, may everything I'm about to say and do 
be inspired and instructed by the Holy Spirit so that your truth and nothing but your truth is spoken, received, and believed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Ashford, let's take it back to the beginning. We're going back to Genesis. We're going to take a look at the ninth chapter, verses 8 through 17. This will be the New Revised Standard, and it reads as follows. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I established my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you ever think about uh, the things you think you know? In other words, do, do you ever think that you know the whole story about something uh, only to discover that you, you really don't? So the story of Noah and the flood is one of those stories in the Bible that we think we know because it's one of the first stories we learned as a child. See, we think it's about animals and about rainbows. You know, God so loved animals that he saved them all and gave us a rainbow to remember his love. And if you don't agree with, uh, with that narrative, with that childhood interpretation of animals and rainbows, th then you may think the story, uh, uh, you may think about the story in terms of God being angry with some hard headed people. And, you know, God is so fed up with humankind uh, and their disobedience that he, he wipes out nearly everything by flooding the entire earth. God that crushes, kills and destroys. Well, if that is your interpretation of God in the story of Noah, <laughs> I can certainly understand why you would not want to have anything to do with that kind of God, a God that is so short-tempered and trigger-happy that he is ready, willing, and able to take out sinners at the blink of an eye. But here's the deal. Neither of those interpretations tells the whole truth of the story. I mean, if God really wanted to push the reset button so that sinful mankind uh, could get realigned with him, man, he had a ton of ways that he could have done it, and none of them would have to include water. So if you were to go back and read the entire flood narrative, you would discover uh, how sin had produced disharmony, right? Uh, and, and, and it really all starts back in Genesis, the third chapter with Adam and Eve and the garden. Everything gets out of whack. Sin produces conflict. Humans and animals are now in conflict. Male and female are now in conflict. People are getting murdered. Over time, things just begin to spiral out of control. Heaven and earth cannot seem to get along and God regrets having put the two together in the first place. In fact, if you look at Genesis uh, 6, 5 and 6, it says, The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. Verse 6, And the Lord was sorry 
that he had made humankind on earth and it grieved him to his heart. Ouch. God realized that everything the human heart thought was evil. Yep. So God responded, but he didn't respond in anger. He didn't respond in revenge, Ashford. He responded in regret. He was, quote, sorry he had made humankind on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. Think about it this way. God created us in his image, right? We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, think about the love and the care that went into creating us only for God to see us corrupted by sin. What he intended for us and what we allowed sin to corrupt in us caused him grief. And so he sends the flood, not out of revenge, but out of grief over this relationship that has been torn apart by sin and rebellion. Ashford, when God's intentions get interrupted by sin, there are consequences. When God's mercy is rejected, there are consequences and the consequences affect more than just you and me. It affects us. It affects all the things around us. And in this case, it led to the near total destruction of the world. When we reject God, his judgment must and will fall. And too often now, when, when, when we think about God's judgment, we, we, we think of this angry God. That's, that's the Old Testament thought process, this angry God. But in fact, God's judgment is not anger. God's judgment, God's wrath is really his love in action against sin. That's a great way to think about it, and I'll say it again. That God's judgment or wrath is actually his love in action against sin. God didn't wipe out everything and then walk away. No, he did not. He used the flood to reset creation, to start something new. He does an earth scrub down so that earth can get it right, so he can try it again, so he can have a do-over. He does it to ultimately provide a way of salvation. What God had called good in Genesis 1, he now says it is evil. In Genesis 1, God separated the water from the waters, is what the Bible says. In Genesis 7, he brings them back together. And in chapter 8, he separates them a second time. This time, he's got something else in mind. In chapter 9, he makes that promise to Moses, to, to Noah. He makes the promise to Noah never to do that kind of thing again. Again, why would God, knowing full well that the human heart, our human heart, is inclined to evil, why would he enter into this eternal covenant and then require nothing in return? That's a great question. Because the flood is not going to wash away sin. It's not going to disinfect the people's hearts against their sinful and evil ways. So why do it? Well, one commentary, a writer, put it this way. He says that God reset creation because having a righteous relationship with him was that important. And even though he knows how raggedy we are and can be, he was never, never going to give up on giving us an opportunity to get back in line. The promise God made to Noah was to never again set out to restore us by destroying us. And isn't that what Jesus Christ said about his mission? He says, I have come so that you may have life. Isn't that what God sent Jesus to the world to do? Not to condemn the world, not to destroy the world, but that the world through him would be saved. And God continues to keep his promise. 
And look, you can look through the Bible. There are a bunch of promises in the Bible, a lot of scripture that encourage and equip. But every single last one of them is rooted in the promise that God made to Noah to always be present with the people. John Wesley, who's the organizer of the uh, Methodist movement, supposedly said this on his deathbed. He said, best of all, God is with us. Isn't that true? Best of all, God continues to be with us. He was with me when I didn't know he was there. Ashford, he's been with you when you didn't know he was there. And when you discovered he was there, what a hallelujah moment that was. Ashford, we are not alone. We're not alone. And the symbol of God's promise to never have us alone, to, to, for, for us to be alone, the, the, the symbol of that promise is the rainbow. The rainbow symbolized hope to Noah. And Jesus is the manifestation of that hope for us. The word became flesh. So during this Lenten season, we're all being called to reconcile with the Lord. We're all being called to fast and to pray and to sharpen our focus on Christ and to claim the promise that God will never leave us nor forsake us. It's our opportunity to reset, to be restored. And it's not just a personal call. It's a corporate call, Ashford, for all of us to come together on one accord as people who have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but who are determined and resolved to live into the gospel as a community of believers to the best of our ability. We have a job to do, and that is to keep God present. God made the promise. Let's claim the promise during this Lenten season. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to join us for our virtual altar call. Our Lord, I thank you for your word that has gone forward. I thank you, Lord, that because it is your word, it never returns void. Lord, I pray that in the days and the weeks and the months to come that your word will find its rightful place in the hearts and in the minds of those who heard it and that they will be changed. I pray that all of us will use this Lenten season to reset, to remember the promise. Lord, you said you would never leave us. You are with us. You are not out to destroy us. You're out to redeem us, to restore us, not destroy us. And so we receive that. In Jesus' name, if you have a prayer concern or a celebration, I invite you to lay your hands uh, on your uh, smart device, on your computer, your laptop, uh, whatever. Uh, but uh, bring it to our virtual altar and trust that the Lord will deal with it in ways that only he can. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to, uh, to, to accept him today, to receive him today, to receive his grace and his mercy and his favor today. Simply say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Change my life. Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son who came to earth, who died on the cross, who was raised from the dead to save me of my sins. I believe that I receive that. And if you say that, then you will be saved. If you have any uh, questions uh, about this uh, worship celebration today, this service, the salvation process, the message, again, uh, let us know. Uh, send us an email, uh, give us a phone call. We certainly look forward to hearing from you. It's time now for our offering. It's time to give back uh, to God that which he has given to us. We thank you, Ashford, for your continued uh, generosity. Those of you who are uh, joining this service for the first time, or maybe you've been uh, with us over the past several weeks, if you feel so led uh, to share a gift, we would certainly receive it. We have uh, multiple ways to give here at Ashford. You can give online by simply going to our website and clicking the Give button. You can text to give. Text my Ashford the dollar sign, to 73256. <clears throat> Pardon me. You can also uh, use our Ashford Auto Draft. Many of our members do that. It's a way uh, to uh, be a consistent and recurrent 
a giver here at Ashford, or you can, of course, share your uh, gifts by a mail. And there is the address that is on the screen. Lord, we thank you for the gifts. We thank you for the givers. All these come from you, O Lord, and of thine own have we simply given back to you. Bless us as we move forward into this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Karen, you're still with us, I see. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, thank wonderful you very much. message. Wonderful uh, thank message. You, thank you for your uh, leadership today. Uh, and, and again, congratulations on, on your uh, award. Uh, and I just believe there is more you. to come. Your best days are still ahead of you. Amen. <laughs> Let there be. I'll tell you something funny real quick. When you played that video, what was so funny is that my mom knew that I had won before I even knew. Because Yeah, I'm serious. We were watching it. Now we were watching it, but it was, she had a, she was watching it on a different network than I was. So she was getting everything before me. So she, and then, you know, Glenn Piper is the, my producer. So she and Glenn's wife who won female artist of the year, they both called me at the same time screaming and I'm sitting there looking at, at the TV because I don't know anything. And they're screaming, they're like, you won, you won. And I said, <laughs> what? And so my mom's like, Carrie, yeah, you won. I just heard, you know, so of course, after that, then of course, the the video, the announcement, oh, okay. Well, they had already started celebrating before. <laughs> Well, leave, leave, it, it, leave, it, it, leave it to mama to let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> well, anyway. But thank well, God, God for God, her. I thank God for yes, her. Yes, God bless her. Um, so listen, if you would, uh, as you do every week, uh, please close us out in song. Thank you. All right, Ashford family and all of our friends with us, this blessing, just go with it, take it with you. And no matter what, remember that the Lord is with you and he will keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May he give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Amen. Well, again, Ashford, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, to today. As always, uh, we close out every worship service with three questions. I provide the questions. You know the answers. Who's the head of this church? Jesus. Who is the church? We are. And what are, are we as the church called to do? We are called to serve. And during this Lenten season, remember the promise. God is with us. Uh, pardon, pardon me putting it this way, but he ain't going nowhere. Uh, so God, God bless you all, and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Bye-bye. God bless you.